So this will be a brief talk this morning, or this afternoon, this evening, um, whenever you find this video. So because God is a good God, he is looking for good. When God comes and visits his creation, when his angels come to make an account for what they see in the lives of the, the people, he wants to see good. He wants to see what he has designed. He wants to see that actually being what he's designed it to be. So it is, it is important to God that we obey. It is important to God that we be found in his will for our lives. It's almost like if you think of your children and your children are misbehaving, you do so much for them, you provide for them, basically all of their needs are being supported by you. Of course, supported by the Lord, but what they know is supported by you. But yet, when you expect certain things from them, when you look at their behavior, their behavior is not, their behavior shows that they're not appreciative or their behavior doesn't feel like they appreciate the sacrifice or they appreciate the things that you do for them. Now, of course, they can't, you know, if your children are young, they can't go to work and clock into a job, work and actually help you pay bills. Or they may not be mentally able or, or physically able to help with certain tasks or certain things around the house or contribute in any kind of way. But you do want them to contribute through their obedience, through when you say something or you put something out there for them to do, they're able to follow the instruction, they're able to follow the directions. So what if they don't? You begin to get angry, it bothers you, um, and you want, to, you want to bring correction. You may chastise them, you may beat them, you know, to get them to understand, no, this is the way you should be doing this. I said do this, you did that, so now, there needs to be a consequence. So the Bible says that God rebukes and chastens those that he loves. And that's evidence. That's evidence that we are sons when God doesn't allow you to live outside of his expectations for your life. Now, what if you are a person that God has been ignoring? What if you're someone that God has just been letting you do it your way? He's let you create your own life and he's let you create his your own life outside of him, outside of the men of God that he's placed in the earth to position men to engage him, to be acceptable to him, those that are been that have been positioned to to baptize, to lay hands, to counsel, to develop, and to keep in the faith, what if you bypass those people and you say, you already know what's best? Well, God has to make a decision. God has to see that, and he has to adjust with the fact that you want to do it your way. Now, we are thankful for the mercies of God because the mercies of God can disrupt our passionate desire to live life absent of God's scrutiny and direction and knowledge and truth. But when God intervenes and says, okay, you've lived this way for this long, but now I have these expectations then man has to make a decision. When God does something great in your life, he heals you, he delivers you from something, there's an expectation with that. 
God doesn't just heal us so that we can just go on with our lives and continue doing what we're doing. No, God did something for you. That was an act of love. That was an act of mercy. That was an act of forgiveness. And then he's saying, will you come? Will you come? God wants you. And he sends Jesus. And Jesus says, hey, God has need of you. God wants to use you. God wants to work through your life. But if we live a life of we live lives of ignorance and lives that don't put God as the focal point and the, fo the focus, the primary focus, because God knows we have lives, we, we get married, we have children, we have wives, we have, you know, all of us have secular jobs and other things, but God expects holiness. He wants to make us a holy people and a faithful people, and he wants us to learn of his righteousness and submit to him and, and, and be honest of the fact that without his help, we don't know what his expectations are. We don't know what his standard is for our lives. And, we, and even if we do know that standard, without his consistent help and support, we will not be able to fulfill his expectations or fulfill his purposes for our lives. And it is the will of God that we do that. I don't want to come on here and speak to you, those of you that are in sin, those of you that are in adultery or fornication, those of you that are unrepentant, those of you that are not in church, are not attending a church, those of you that uh, are dis just disobedient in your life. I don't want to try to help you create a blueprint of how to succeed without the repentance, without being converted without the transformation in your thinking because you need to, that's what repentance describes, a turning away. You're shifting in your life. You're shifting in your thinking and you're saying, I don't desire to do those things anymore. I used to be that person. I used to think this way. I used to have those desires. But now, because I live a life of repentance and I understand repentance brings me closer to God and I, I'm becoming less and less like myself, how I was without God. I want to stay with God and I want to be strong in God. So I'm not talking to those of you who don't desire to, to seek God in your daily life, to seek the face of God and to humble yourself and to seek the throne of God and the throne of grace so that you may obtain mercy so that you can receive from God what's needed so that you can be what you need to be. You need to repent if you are outside of God's will and if you have not submitted yourself to the order and the structure of God and you are not currently obeying by the leadership of the Holy Ghost, then I want to let you know that this message may not be for you, but it may be for you in what I'm saying right now. You must understand that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And you must understand that Jesus set standards and expectations for the church and it is the will of God that you adhere to that and that you be what God has called you to be and you exude the strength of God so that you can live a holy and righteous life and be acceptable to God. That is my hope and my desire. And I hope that you want that too because God is not going to allow himself to be available forever. He said, seek me while I may be found. So today needs to be the day that you seek him because the day that you decide to do it, it may be too late.